Hi, I'm Tom Field, Vice President of Editorial with Information Security Media Group. I'm talking about analytics and machine learning. And it's my pleasure to be speaking with Mordecai Rosen. He's a General Manager and Senior Vice President of Security with CA Technologies. Mo, thanks so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be here, Tom. Okay, I want to get to machine learning and analytics, but I'm going to lead up to it with this. From your perspective, what is the next big thing in cybersecurity? So it's interesting that you asked that question and want to get to analytics and machine that's where learning. We're go. Because <laughs> I think that is the next big thing. It's kind of packaged in different ways if you kind of walk around RSA, but it's the underpinning of every next generation product you're seeing. So there's a next generation of endpoint product called EDR, what's underneath it? Analytics, machine learning. Next generation of network security products, analytics and machine learning. And in our space, where we do most of our business in the security side, in identity and access management, that is clearly kind of the next generation of uh, platform for us. So Mo, the big challenge that we hear about all the time is trying to make your controls secure enough to protect the organization and the individuals, but simple enough so that you don't lose people because of friction. Where do analytics and machine learning fit into that conundrum? Yeah, so th that's a great question. I think we have a lot of experience here. One of the products that we have is actually in the fraud de detection space for uh, payment security. So when somebody buys something over the web, we have a product that runs into issuing banks and its whole job is kind of do a risk analysis on the transaction for two reasons. One is they want to deter fraud, which is clearly the security side of the reason. But they, all, and they deter fraud by stepping up authentication. They have to ask you a question. They have to ping you on your phone with an SMS message. The problem is every time I do that, there's a higher likelihood that you'll lose the transaction. And so analytics helps you balance between low friction and high security based on continuous analysis. So we started in that area, but now we're start, as, as you know, we're starting to see it in all elements of security in the identity space where we live, identity has gotten to the point where it's no longer who you are, but it's what you do. And the only way for me to figure out whether you're doing what you typically do is analytics and machine learning. So that's going to require the, grabbing a lot of data and the questions arise, what do you use with, do with that user behavior data and what about privacy concerns that arise because of it? Yeah, pri privacy is kind of this, the, the seesaw now of, of, of security, right? So the, the specific way that we use it is the, the, ways, the, the ways consumers and users want, it, want us to use it. They want to make sure that no one's compromised their accounts. Like if we know that on Facebook, what's the last figure? 80 to 100 million fake Facebook accounts, right. compromised Facebook accounts. So we use it specifically to secure our customers and their customers, you know, we're not in the business of collecting uh, names and email addresses and s selling them to foreign governments, which we've seen this last year as well. So, but, but for us, there's the other piece of privacy, which is once we collect that data, to the extent there is any PII data, and usually there's not, but to the extent we collect that data, we have to secure it. And we have to make sure that our security is airtight because we've seen suppliers be breached sure. and PII data gets makes its way out into the wild not because somebody was uh, you know, not doing what they needed to do they got breached and we, we, we saw you know your email address my email address you know how, how many times have you received the uh, time to renew your credit card right so right. I, I think from our perspective as we as the whole security industry goes on for the next decade this is one of the big issues, right? Mm. And the interesting piece of it is, it's not only a US issue. Right. So it's not just a technology issue, it's a policy issue, right? So, you know, yesterday, uh, Congressman McCall had, had a, a keynote and afterwards we had a, uh, a, a round table of security leaders and it was closed door and he was seeking advice and kind of this interaction with, with the industry. And, one of the things we were talking about is we here can pass laws about a, a way to expedite information sharing because he can pass a law that removes the liability between us sharing 
information with the government or us sharing information between each other, but that doesn't affect the EU and it doesn't affect right. Asia PAC. And their view of privacy, you know, GDPR coming out in the EU, it's, it's different. So like there's a broader policy initiative outside the US and that's kind of part of the, what we have to deal with over the next, you know, 10 years and you know that that you know some of these privacy issues have hard teeth in them. Yes. Sir. Right. So giant fines, and we've seen that a little bit. So it's it's on our minds, mm -hmm. uh, and we have to figure out and we have to elevate this issue of when does privacy really put our industry at risk? Mm -hmm. And then we have to. That's why we talk to Congressman McCall, right? Well, I want to ask you about that because I know you attended Chairman McCall's. <coughs> keynote address at our RSA conference yesterday. It's some strong statements. What were, were your takeaways from the, the message? Yeah, he had strong statements. You know, it was interesting. Back in June or July, I had the honor of testifying in front of his committee. So it, it kind of started then. He has the oversight committee and I was one of the witnesses. And so this was the, the, the second time, you know, I, I wound up engaging with him. You know, one of his messages is uh, we're losing, right? Yes. The, the other message, and I think this has been broadly said at the conference this year is that uh, nation state activity has picked up incredibly. You know, last December, you know, the Ukraine power grid got breached again. And it was sort of a goof too. Like it was just to show that they could. Like right. they didn't do any damage. It was just mm -hmm. to show that they could. And nation, higher nation state activity, you know, their fingerprints being left across our systems in FedGov. And those fingerprints are being left there on purpose. Okay, it's it's a demonstration of, mm -hmm. of what what's to do next. And so his focus is now creating, you know, he said this, he's gonna create an organization, a new agency inside of DH, DHS to focus on cyber with the specific concept there is that, you know, he wants to make sure that we keep what effectively is kind of a new internet police action away from the military. So like dot, dot gov should not be protected by the military. Mm -hmm. You know, the military doesn't protect our streets, police do. And it's, it's kind of the same thought process. So there's this new agency. He's really promoting and he has in his bills uh, information sharing between all of us. And he's done, a, I mean, he's really taken a leadership role here. He's removed liabilities so that we can, uh, you know, we can operate more efficiently. And he's trying to figure out how we can leverage that better to kind of protect our critical infrastructure. And then, uh, you know, he's really focused, you know, the interesting thing about a piece of this conversation, and I think you, you'll, I, I was enthused after it. He wasn't only talking about what we have to do for the next year or two to protect our country and protect our infrastructure. We literally had conversation about what do we have to keep in mind when quantum computers come out, sure. when they can crack RSA, you know, 248 encryption. Yeah. And the idea that somebody's taking a long view, a longer view, you know, you wouldn't think you're sitting in a meeting with a congressman and you're talking about, you know, particles spinning in opposite directions that are entangled. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we were talking about. That's great. And, and it's encouraging. Uh, last question for you. I've spent a lot of time with CA Technologies talking about single sign-on, talking about privileged access management. Tell me what you're doing specifically in machine learning and analytics now. Yeah, yeah. So we're embedding uh, analytics and machine learning every place in all of our products across the portfolio. You know, we talked about our payment security business. There's a new uh, release of a product called the Risk Analytics Network that takes that machine learning and expands its protection on top of uh, credit card transactions. Because now we do it on a per bank, bank basis. Now we're taking this data, all the, all the fingerprinted endpoints, all the banks we cover, we're kind of funneling it to one place so we have a better view of what, what, what can happen in credit cards. For our authentication products, you know, we were talking about kind of friction versus security. Right. We embed analytics and machine learning in there so that we can reduce friction to make a consumer's experience better. But when it's time to transfer money from your account to somebody else's account, now we're going to increase friction. Great. And we can do that in real time because we can determine what the behavior is. I mean, if analytics is and machine learning, if we just kind of you know, summarize what we're trying to do, we're trying to figure out when in the behavioral sequence we should add more security and until those events happen, we'll kind of stay out of your way. Yep. That's the analytics part. The machine learning 
part is if you baseline normal behavior, and I kind of try to figure out whether there are anomalies on the back of that, that baseline has to change over time. Sure. That's the machine learning part. That's what it, that's what it does. So we're doing that in our advanced authentication product. In our privilege access management product, um, which has really been a core product for us, you know, growing incredibly quickly. We, you know, we know that 80% of the breaches that we've seen over the last few years are the compromise of a privileged credential. We've added analytics in there, again, with this idea that if identity is not only who you are, but what you do, if you start acting differently during, a, especially a privilege operation, I get to remove a database, if you haven't logged onto this machine before, this is the Snowden effect. If you yeah. haven't logged onto this machine before and you're logging on now, I'm going to take action that increases friction for you. I'm not going to shut you down, mm -hmm. but I may say, hey, listen, you don't typically do this. I'm going to force you to re-authenticate right now because I just want to make sure that the you who logged on is still the same you who's doing this thing. So we're doing it in privilege access management. We're doing it in our identity management and governance product because when people kind of set up government, governance of identities, which, which control access policy, they make mistakes. You know, we've seen this with Active Directory for a long time. So now we embed analytics in the provisioning of it. When, when, so when I'm provisioning you, Tom, I go, hey, I want to provision Tom with these access privileges. And we'll come back and say, hey, Tom does this job. And everybody else who does this job doesn't need these privileges. But we can only figure out that if we run analytics on top of the base. So we're putting it everywhere. It makes our products smarter and allows us to do, do two things. It allows us to protect better and allows us to reduce friction more. And the more security takes on the nature of being invisible, the, the, the more available it is to everybody. Well said. Thank you very much, Mo. I appreciate it. Tom, thank you. Very good. We've been talking about security, analytics, machine learning. Now, I've been speaking with Mordecai Rosen, General Manager of Security with CA Technologies. For Information Security Media Group, I'm Tom Field. Thank you very much.